Hi, I'm Libby Gustin, and welcome to my kitchen. My friend Mia's here, and she's learning how to set up a sustainable kitchen. So that means what we use, how we use it, even how we dispose of it, it's gonna be better for us. It's gonna be better for the environment. And that even includes our snack foods. Oh, thank God. <laughs> no, you know, we snack, so if we're eating snack foods, we should make sure we're getting some nutrients right. from them. And sweet snacks also can have nutrients in them. So one of the things I don't use all, when I'm making f uh, sweet foods is white sugar. Right. Because it's very processed, mm -hmm. it doesn't have any nutrients in it. In fact, it can even inhibit us from absorbing nutrients. Mm -hmm. So I like to use sucanat. Sucanat. It's <laughs> kind of fun to say. It's just a straight dehydrated cane juice. So it still has some of the minerals like the potassium in okay. it. Okay. So it's better for us. Mm -hmm. um, and you can use it to make sweet snacks like popcorn. Okay. We can make a sweet and savory popcorn. Mm -hmm. With popcorn, I usually like to add some nuts so I get a little protein because right. it doesn't have a lot of nutrients mm -hmm. in it. Uh, so let's start with that. Let's make a sweet and savory okay. popcorn. So when I make popcorn, I usually buy organic kernels. Okay, and what about microwave popcorn? Because I live off of microwave popcorn. Microwave popcorn's easy, but you don't know what kind of fats they're using in it, what kind mm -hmm. of salt, so it's not going to be as good as for you, and it costs so much more. This is 18 cents. Oh, okay. Very and cheap. And it makes the, a lot more, and it makes probably. A, it's going to make a full pot. Yeah. So I usually start with the melted ghee, mm -hmm. and I use ghee because it's going to be a high heat. So you want a fat that can withstand high heat. You can use avocado oil or you can use coconut oil as well. And then I'm gonna let that sit until you hear your first pop. And so in the meantime, we can make the topping that we're gonna put on it okay. since we're doing a sweet popcorn. And I start with uh, two ounces of melted ghee. And then the mixture you have there is the sucanat sugar, cinnamon, uh, three tablespoons of cinnamon, and uh, half a uh, fourth of a teaspoon of cardamom. And it's just all mixed together. And just, just pour it, it in and, and mix it up. Mix it. It's just going to make a nice thick syrup that we're oh. going to put on as a topping. Okay, so here we got the starting to pop. So one thing that's really important is you want to just keep shaking it so the bottom doesn't burn. And you, you do that when you start hearing the first yeah, pop. Yeah, as soon as you hear the first pop, then you're going to start shaking it. And just keep it shaking the whole time it's popping. And how do you know when it's done, when it just stops Yeah, well listen, because it's, it's, see how it's starting to pop pretty regularly? It's going to slow down and you'll hear a pop, and then it'll pause, and then you'll hear another pop. Yeah, you know, for a while I was concerned about eating popcorn because I know most of our corn is genetically modified. Right. And so I wasn't sure about popcorn, mm -hmm. but I actually learned that popcorn is a different kind of corn, so it's not genetically modified. No popcorn oh, is, so you don't have to worry okay, about that. Okay. But I still like to buy the organic because it's, again, better for the environment. Mm -hmm. And the pesticides, the corn husk pretty much protect it from the pesticides. Mm -hmm. However, I still want to make sure I'm taking care of the environment. So, because the pesticides used are not good for the soil. It's not good for our water. See how fast it's popping yeah, now? Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, so it's really important that I keep shaking it or you smell it start burning. Okay, see how it's slowing down? Yeah. So I'm gonna turn it off. Oh. Or on. <laughs> All right. And I'm not gonna open the lid quite yet because see, it's I'm still look popping. Pop in your eyes. I, I made that. I did make that mistake when I first started. Okay. So here we go. And we have popcorn. Go ahead and pour it. Up. Pour half of it on. I usually do half and then shake it up really well and then I'll pour the rest on. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Smell it? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Go ahead. So I just pour all of it in? Yeah. Oh my god, it smells amazing. It's like the fanciest popcorn I've ever had. It's so easy, too. <laughs> there we go. And we'll let that cool down. You know not to eat popcorn right when it's done because it's all chewy. Really? So you want to oh, let it cool down that. a little bit and then it oh, gets crispy. Okay. Yep. One of my favorite sweet snacks is peanut butter cookies. Oh my God, that's amazing. So it's full of protein mm -hmm. and it's so filling. Yeah. How so are we going to make that next? Let's make some, yeah. Yeah, let's make some <laughs> peanut butter cookies. So one of the things I really like about this recipe is that it's only a few simple ingredients. It's mm -hmm. sucanat sugar and egg and peanut butter. Yeah. 
Yeah. So it's gluten free too. Yeah, that's great. So I'm going to let you do it since oh, okay. <laughs> okay. it's the way you'll remember and it's so easy. So I, the peanut butter is cold, so it's really important to know that you start with cold peanut butter. Uh -huh. And I made the peanut butter myself. So you don't use the jarred one, is that bad? I don't use the jarred peanut butter because they put sugar, extra sugar in. I don't know what kind of fats they might add in. Right. And usually they're going to use the peanuts that don't look so fresh. And uh -huh. so they could be susceptible to having a mold that's common on peanuts. Mm -hmm. So I like to know what the peanut looked like when I make it. So I just do it in a Vitamix. So you can also buy it in the machines where you see the peanuts and it makes it. Mm -hmm. Same thing. That way you know it's good peanuts. Right. Yeah, you're going to need that. <laughs> it's peanut butter and it's cold peanut butter. Oh you just going to get God, really in there and really dump it hard. in there. That means it's still cold. Perfect. This is a workout. <laughs> So then you're going to add the sugar. All of it? Just dump all of it in there, it's fine. And how do we okay. know when it's done? When it's you can see the mixed. sugar's evenly mixed in there, exactly. See, you knew exactly when. And now we'll just add the egg. Don't chop my fingers off. <laughs> Perfect. Now see, it looks like dough. <laughs> When I make a batch of cookies, I can make three different peanut butter cookies. Oh, I can okay. make peanut butter cookies with blueberries, I can make peanut butter cookies with cacao, mm -hmm. or I can make plain. Okay. So what I'm going to do is first take out some plain so that oh, I can so make can the make blueberry the and the plain and we'll add the cacao. Turn it up just a little bit so it gets the edges there. All right, perfect. Now we can make peanut butter cookies with the cacao. And is cacao supposed to be better than just like regular chocolate or like the chocolate chips? It's a great had? question because it's kind of that same principle I use all the time in this kitchen. It's not processed. It's okay. straight cacao, so it's got a lot of nutrients in it still. It's not sweet. Yeah. So, because I'm putting it in a cookie that has a lot of sugar in it, it's going to work fine. Uh, okay. If I was just doing the cacao, I'd want to add some of the sukunat to it. Mm. Perfect. And now we have cookies that are ready to bake. And you bake them in the oven at 350. About 12 to 18 minutes, it depends on your oven. Okay. It also depends on the size. I find this size is about 12 minutes. Okay. But this is an important trick because we don't have any flour in them. Um, I put them in the freezer so that they get hard again, like the hard peanut butter, so that when they're baking, they'll actually stay this size. So you put it in the freezer before or Before after? I bake them. Okay. So that before. this gets kind of a little bit harder. So only about 10 or 15 minutes. You just want it to firm up and then you can stick it straight okay. in the oven. So while the cookies are baking, let's make uh, an avocado mousse. Okay. It's a creamier dessert, and sometimes, you know, you just really you need, need that. that. You need that. <laughs> so, and avocados are really good for you. Mm -hmm. um, they actually increase your metabolism. Did you oh, know that? okay. I did not so, know that. This is uh, a couple of avocados, and you just put them in. A few simple ingredients, a fresh squeezed cara cara orange. Cara cara. It's just what's in season. You can use any um, orange. Okay. <laughs> uh, a fresh lime, and this is a bear lime. It's one that um, I think gives you more juice and it's got oh, a really okay. nice taste. And a little bit of vanilla. Oh. And that's it. Okay. And then we're just gonna um, whip it into a nice mousse. Oh. All right. Such a pretty color. We have mousse. <laughs> you can serve this several different ways. So you can do it just plain like that and right. just have a nice creamy dessert. You can put it in the freezer and get it a little bit kind of like thicker, cream, get it a little bit of an ice cream. <laughs> or you can also serve it with a crust, which is one of my favorite ways to do okay. it. So I just make a simple crust. It's dates, hemp seed, chia seeds, and walnuts. Mm -hmm. A little pinch of salt and you just mix it up in a food processor. Oh, okay. Looks like this. And then you just take a couple of scoops, put it in the bottom because it's got the dates in it. You just press it down, makes a nice crust. Oh, okay, that's See? cute. <laughs> so we've got a nice little crust to pour the mousse on. And when I'm feeling like I need a little bit more, I like to make a nice topping oh, okay. to put on what top kind of, of it. Topping? So I, I usually do a coconut whipped cream. 
That's my favorite, but it also works really nice if you don't have a lot of time. Uh, simple yogurt with a little bit of honey in it, and you just mix that in there and put it on top. And That coconut whipped cream sounds really good. Yeah, let's, let's make the coconut whipped okay. cream. This is my favorite. So when I make the whipped cream, coconut whipped cream, I usually have fresh coconut. That's the best. It is. <laughs> and you're not going to use, so what you do is I, once you open it, you're going to drain the water. Okay. And I'm doing it through a strainer because some of the shell got in there. And then you're just going to take the meat out. And I usually just use a spoon. Mm -hmm. You can just get back in here and some's a little tougher than others. If I'm not making a topping for the mousse, mm -hmm. I usually maybe add a little honey to sweeten up the avocado so it has a little more flavor. But since not we're gonna, sugar or that dehydrated sugar cane. The dehydrated sugar is not going to mix as well. And mm -hmm. honey actually is really good for you. It helps you build an immunity. If you get local honey, which this is, it helps you build an immunity to the pollens where you oh, live. Okay, so, so, okay. Another benefit yeah. for, the sweet, <laughs> for the sweet treat. All right, so then I'm going to add just a little bit of water. Um, because I don't want to make it watery. I want to make a whipped cream. Can so you use the coconut bit. water as well? Yeah, this is this is coconut water oh, too. Okay. I had some extra, so I was just going to use that today. And we have delicious coconut whipped cream. All right, and that's good for a couple of days. If you're gonna not eat it after a couple of days, freeze it. If you know okay. you're not gonna eat all of right. it, put it in the freezer. And then when you get it out of the freezer, let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes to get a little soft. Mm -hmm. And then you have a nice creamy dessert. I also sometimes will put honey and yogurt on top. Okay. So this is so if you don't the honey yogurt for that, mixture. You can just exactly, it so it's just really easy and simple. Look at all the different snacks we made. It looks amazing. They all have nutrients in them. Mm -hmm. And you know, what's really important is to remember it's still sugar. Right. So everything we eat should be in balance. Mm -hmm. And Portions. I find, like with this popcorn, for example, I want to add the nuts. The mm -hmm. nuts are going to give me a protein. And it's also going to make a nice uh, savory because they're spicy right. nuts. So it's going to make a nice spicy nut. Um, and that's also another thing I think is important. When you take have a snack, if you have some protein with it, I'm not going to overindulge in the sugar. I'm going right. to get my sweet fix, and I'm going to be satisfied, and I'm not going to want to eat more. Yeah. <laughs> so I encourage you to try the different sugars, honey, maple syrup, sucanat. Those are mm -hmm. all great forms of sugar to use.